Hello, my name is Colin, and in this episode of Let's Learn Blender, we'll be looking at a way of speeding up the process of modeling symmetrical objects. Blender actually has two quick ways of letting you model both halves of an object at the same time. They're called the Mirror Modifier, as well as the Symmetrize tool. So we'll be looking at both of those in this video. Of course, if you liked this video, or if you learned something in it, please go ahead and click on that like button below this video. It really helps out me and my channel, and I really appreciate it. Also, if you want to see more videos like this one, in either Blender or in the Godot game engine, click on subscribe and the bell icon below as well. So in Blender, if you're modeling something like a character or a person, or maybe a vehicle, or maybe an aircraft or spaceship, those objects and other objects like these are symmetrical for the most part. And so you can speed up your workflow by only modeling one half, either the left side or the right side, usually of one of those types of objects. As you can see here in my screen, I have a very basic beginning of, well, a little spaceship, kind of like from the game Asteroids that I've just spent about 90 seconds modeling. What I'm gonna do here is I'm going to move a copy of it over to the right, and I'm gonna press Shift D on my keyboard to duplicate it with it selected, and I'm gonna tap the letter X on my keyboard, so I'm only gonna move it over, and I'll hold Control so it snaps to the increments on my screen, just so I have a little bit of a, uh, and a predictable location for both of the objects. So on the spaceship on the right, I'm going to model both halves at the same time using what's called the mirror modifier. Now, in order for the mirror modifier to work, and of course, if you're familiar with any modifiers, I've talked about both the subdivision surface modifier before in this video series, as well as the Boolean modifier before in this video series. Modifiers are, of course, under the wrench tab in the properties editor. When you have a mesh object selected and you go to the wrench tab and you go to add modifier, Modifier, you are adding one of these modifiers, which is a procedural change to the mesh object. The modifier I'll be showing you for this little instance of my little simple low poly spaceship is called the mirror modifier. And when you add this modifier to a mesh object, it basically clones and flips the mesh over on whichever direction or axes that you want. So you can just continue working on one half of the model. Before I get ahead of myself though, it's important that you only actually have one half of your mesh and the half of your mesh lines up or the edge, the boundary of that half of the mesh perfectly lines up with this orange dot, the origin of that mesh object. So what I'm gonna do before I add the mirror modifier is I'm gonna press tab to go into edit mode of this mesh. And it's gonna be a good idea for me to add a line running through front to back exactly of my mesh perfectly lining up with that origin. So I'm gonna go ahead and press Control R on my keyboard. Control R will make a loop cut. And of course, if I'm in edit mode, depending on my mesh, if I have some end gons on my mesh, the loop cut will not continue through an end gon a face with more than four or three uh, edges running around that face. So what I'll do here is I'll go ahead and put my mouse over one of the edges that runs side to side. So I'm cutting all the way through the middle front to back, separating the left from the right side. And I'm gonna click and then I'm gonna right click, okay? So again, Control R, hover my mouse over, click, and then right click. You can also use, of course, on your tool bar on the left-hand side, you can use the loop cut tool. You can simply just click once on the appropriate edge to get the right uh, edge cutting your model in half. Once I have that, I'll probably wanna check it. So I'm gonna go up to my top view. I can press the letter Z up here in my little axes gizmos on screen. And if I zoom in, you can see that orange line, the new edge loop that I made is running through that origin. If I just quickly jump over into vertex select mode and then switch back to my selection tool and select one of the vertices along that line, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press this little tiny arrow up here to bring up, that little arrow brings up your side properties panel, you will probably have three tabs in here, item view and tool. I have an extra one for my screencast keys, uh, which I am not displaying for some reason down here. I'm gonna go up to the item tab here at the top and you can see with this vertex selected, it has a position on the X axis of zero meters. If I use my move tool and move that vertex over, it's a little bit offset. I don't want that because I need a perfectly straight line for my mirror point, okay? Next, I need to, in edit mode, select all of the vertices on the other side that I don't wanna keep because I'm gonna mirror the right-hand side here. So I'm gonna go into vertex select mode. I'm gonna use my box selection tool. If you don't have that, you can just click and hold and select 
the select box tool. And I'm going to click and drag from my top view to select everything on the left side of my mesh. Now, I didn't quite do it right because from the top view, I can't see through my mesh. And that means when I select, I'm only selecting the vertices that I can see here, not the ones below. I want to select all the way through my mesh. So I'll go back up to my top view and then I'm going to turn on this X-ray mode. And that lets me actually see through my mesh. If I orbit, you can see, I can see all the vertices on the other side of the mesh. And that means when I go back up to my top view, I can use my box select tool and box select, and it'll select everything, including the vertices that I can't see right now. I'll orbit to prove that. Okay, and now I'll press the letter X on my keyboard and delete those vertices. If you're in vertex select mode, you wanna delete the vertices that you have selected, not faces or edges. There we go, I've got half of my mesh. Now I can press the tab key on my keyboard. I can go to the wrench tab in the properties editor with that mesh selected. I'll go to add modifier and I will add the mirror modifier right here. When I add the mirror modifier, you can see what it does. Now, if it does not look good for you, if it's flipping or mirroring in the wrong direction, depending on your mesh and which way it's facing, you might need to change the axis on which it's creating the mirror. It creates the mirror, of course, across the origin, no matter what. So if I choose, let's say, not the X axis, but the Y axis, you can see what's happening. It's mirroring it front to back. If I choose the Z axis instead, you can see it's mirroring top to bottom. We don't want that. I'll choose X and turn off Z. And there we go. I'll turn off X-ray. That doesn't look quite as good. Now, one of the nice things about the mirror modifier is that when you press tab with the mesh selected to go into edit mode, you are only modeling one half of the mesh. And when you make a change to the real half, your existing half of the mesh, the mirror modifier, as long as you leave it on the mesh and don't go to the arrow and don't press apply when you're in object mode, don't do that until you're finally done or ready to apply to make it final the mirror modifier's effects. I'm going to leave it there just for now. You can change one half of your mesh. Let's say I grab, oh, I'll go into face selection mode and I'll select that end gone and I'll use my move tool and I'll make this side of the wing a little bit thinner. You can see it did the exact same thing in real time on the other half. If I make the, the wing thicker, you can see it does it just in real time. It doesn't just apply to moving faces, edges, and vertices. If I were to say extrude up that face, well, I'm creating new geometry and it does the exact same thing on the other side. It's really, really powerful. Now, there are some limitations to the mirror modifier and there are some circumstances where you might get a little bit frustrated. And those times are usually when you're working around the mirror point or the mirror plane. If I go up to vertex select mode and I turn on x-ray mode, one of the things that might happen to you is you might have a gap in the middle of your mesh because maybe your line that runs through the middle or your edges that run around the middle, front to back, top to bottom around the mesh where the mirror line is. If there's a gap in there, well, I'll go ahead and show you what happens. I'll go ahead with my box selection tool. I'll select all the real vertices in my mesh in edit mode. I'll use the move tool and I'll move them over. And as you can see, if your center line doesn't match up with that orange dot, your object origin, well, you're going to have, if I press tab to go back into object mode and turn off x-ray mode, you'll have a gap in your mesh. Likewise, if I press tab and select all those vertices and move them across, well, it's going to do the same thing. It's really, it's the same problem. Your mirror is not kind of touching perfectly the other half of your object. And so it's crossing over or creating a gap. I'll go ahead and press control Z a few times. One of the ways you can solve this until I get back to my proper mesh control Z. One of the ways you can fix this is by turning on clipping. And what clipping does is if you have a vertex that is perfectly at your mirror point, it will stick to that mirror and will not go across it and will not pull away from it. This can be a little bit frustrating if you accidentally put a vertex against your mirror point that you want to move away. But as you can see, if I select any one of these vertices and I grab it and try to move it either on the x-axis in either direction, you can see, well, it's not moving. If I turn clipping off, you can see I can move that point across the mirror, which is not good, or away from the mirror, which would create a gap. Again, clipping solves this problem. Although if you already have a point that's over the mirror, it won't snap it back. So I'll go ahead and press Control Z a few times to get that back. Also, if you have, I'll turn off clipping for a second. If you have some unevenness in this line, 
and you want to solve that really quickly, you can enable merge. I believe it was by default and you can turn up this merge value. If you hold shift on your keyboard and then you drag left or right in this little value box, you should see as I increase this value that it should snap the edges together where there was a gap. If I keep going, holding shift, it'll fix that problem. If I turn off that merge option, you'll see that gap reappear. If I turn it back on, it fixes the problem. This is sort of a last result. So I would try to get your edge as straight as possible. So I would select all of them individually if I really had to and turn the X value down to zero to fix that problem sort of manually. Another problem you might have with a mirror modifier is when you try to scale around your center edge. If I go ahead into edge selection mode and then I use my selection tool and I hold alt and I select the edges that form a loop around this part of my spaceship. And if I press the letter S on my keyboard to scale, well, if I were to have both halves of the mesh that were real, and if I were to select an edge loop that ran, I'll turn X-ray mode on, that ran all the way in a square around this part of my spaceship. And if I tapped S in that case, well, it would scale towards the middle point of all of my selected edges. So it would scale to the exact middle of that section of the spaceship. But because I only have half of those edges selected, it's gonna to scale towards the middle of this selection. And so if I tap S right now, you'll notice that this part of the spaceship is sort of square. As I tap S, you'll notice, and I'll actually go ahead and press escape on my keyboard. I'll turn clipping on. If I tap S, you'll see that as I scale down, because it's not scaling towards this middle point right here, instead it's scaling towards this one, it's not keeping a nice uniform square. So that could be a real problem. In my case, I might just use my move tool and move those vertices uh, over towards the center of the line. And because I have clipping turned on, it solves that problem, but just know that can be a little bit annoying as you're working and scaling around that mirror point. Uh, I'll go ahead and press Control Z a few times. One other problem you might have is if you want to uh, work in sort of a uniform way across the middle point. If I wanna go ahead, let's say on the spaceship and create an inset or a bevel or a chamfer, creating sort of an inset window across this whole top front section of the spaceship where the person, you know, driving the spaceship or flying the spaceship would look out the front window. Well, if I select that face and I tap letter I on my keyboard, of course, the letter I is inset faces. And then I move my mouse towards the middle. Well, it creates an inset of just that face area and not across the entire front windshield essentially of the spaceship. So I would get, if I, let's say, moved that down a little bit, I'll just move that down a little bit. You'll see I get this center bar across my windshield, which maybe I don't want. So uh, what I would have to do here is I'll press control Z on my keyboard a few times to go back to just my first inset. In fact, I don't have a very even inset here. You can see that edge up there is thicker than the side edges, basically the top and bottom insets are thicker than the side insets. I'll go and press Control Z to undo my inset. I'll go back, I'll press Tab to go back into object mode. By the way, if you have that problem where things aren't beveling or insetting evenly, you might wanna go back into object mode. Go to Object, Apply, and Scale, and that way your object's scale is reset to one, one, and one. It doesn't think that it's stretched. If it thinks that it's stretched because it doesn't think its scale is proportional, then you'll get probably an uneven bevel or inset. So now I've done that, I'll go ahead and press tab, I'll select that face, and then I'll tap the letter I on my keyboard and move my mouse in. So now I have an even edge or bevel all the way around. How do I fix this problem while I'm working with the mirror modifier? Well, if I go into vertex select mode, actually I'll go into edge select mode, I'm gonna select that edge there. Basically here, I'm gonna use my snapping tool after I create a few extra vertices and I'm gonna snap the vertex here over and the vertex here over to the middle line and it'll merge the middle line into one. Let me show you what I mean. If I select this edge and I right click and I say subdivide, it's gonna take that single edge and it's gonna make it into two edges. It'll subdivide it with a vertex in the middle. But on the bottom little pop over down here, right away, I can change the number of cuts up to two. So now if I go into vertex select mode, you can see I've got two subdivisions or really three subdivisions with two vertices in the middle. If I take that vertex and I tap GG on my keyboard, double tap 
G, I can slide that vertex down to right about there. I kind of have to eyeball it. Same thing up here. I'll select that one, double tap G, move it up here. And now if I uh, select this vertex, I can merge it with that one. And if you want them to auto merge together and snap together automatically, you can turn on snapping up here. This is the magnet snapping button. We want to snap whatever we have selected to vertices or a vertex. So I'm going to go snap to with this little uh, menu here to vertex. And I'm going to turn on auto merge here. So now if I grab this vertex and I tap G on my keyboard and I move my mouse over to the other vertex and click, those two vertices or vertexes are now one vertex. Same thing up here. I'll grab that one, select it, G, move my mouse over to the other one, click, and now I'm done. I'll turn my menu back to increment. I'll turn off snapping and I'll turn off auto merge right there. So now if I grab that vertex and move it around, you can see it's just one. And down here, this one is just one. That was a whole lengthy process uh, that I really shouldn't have to have done, although that's one of the limitations of the mirror modifier. But hopefully you can see that the mirror modifier in large part will really speed up your process, especially if you're doing some detailed work on one half and you want to make that change on the other side as well. The other way, I'll go ahead and press tab to get out of edit mode of that mesh. The other way you can have a symmetrical mesh and have the opposite half that you're working on be duplicated and flipped is by using the symmetrize tool. The symmetrize tool is not a modifier. It's a tool that you have to use every time you want to update the half that you're not working on. What I'll do here is with this other spaceship selected, I'll press tab to go into edit mode. The symmetrize tool is super easy to use, but it's not automatic. It's not in real time. You have to use it every time you want to update the other half of your mesh. Just like with the mirror modifier, you have to have a middle line. So I'll do the same thing on this spaceship. I'll press control R on my keyboard to make a loop cut. I'll put my mouse over the middle of the spaceship here. I'll click and then I'll right click. Or of course I could use, I'll press control Z. I could use my loop cut tool here and simply hover and click. And there we go. Now that I have a center line, if I want to mirror both halves of my spaceship or symmetrize them, I simply have to select all of the vertices or faces or edges in my mesh. I'll go into face select mode. I'll press the letter A on my keyboard with my mouse over the 3D viewport. A will select all of that type of sub object element, in my case faces. And now I'm simply going to go up to the mesh menu and say symmetrize. Aha, uh -huh, it did it, but it symmetrized or flipped the wrong way. When you use the symmetrize tool, it is a destructive tool. So be very careful. I might go ahead and press control Z if I didn't know what was going on. But because I do, I'll go down to the symmetrize popover down here. This little popover shows you the most recent operation that you just performed. And you can see it's going in the wrong direction, negative X to positive X. If I look up here on my little axes gizmo, well, we want the mirror to go from the positive X over here over to the negative X. So it's going in the wrong direction. So I'll change this to uh, positive X to negative X. And now you can see it took my wing, in fact, this whole half of the spaceship, and it symmetrized it over to the other side. So now if I make a change to uh, this side of the spaceship, I'll go ahead and just make that wing a little bit uh, more flat or thin. You can see it did not symmetrize it automatically. I have to press A on my keyboard to select the entire mesh and then go up to mesh and symmetrize and it'll remember the, the direction that you just used before. So in my case, it worked just like with the mirror modifier. It has a threshold. This is like the clipping, I believe on the mirror modifier. If you have some uh, vertices that aren't quite at the mirror point or a little bit over across that mirror point, you can turn this threshold up and down. Uh, just like with the mirror modifier. Again, I don't need that. So I'll press control Z on my keyboard. And that actually went one step too far back. You can see this side is once again thicker. So I've got everything selected, mesh, symmetrize. There we go. The nice thing about the symmetrize tool is that it does not obstruct you from working on your mesh near the center mirror point. If I want to say select that edge loop around the front of my spaceship like before, well, if I turn on x-ray mode, you can see I have that entire square edge loop selected now. I can tap S on my keyboard. It'll scale proportionally and keep it square, unlike with the mirror modifier. And if I turn off x-ray, 
and go to face selection mode, if I want to make, let's say, that windshield on my little low poly spaceship, I can simply select both those faces and tap I on my keyboard and move my mouse in. It has the same problem, I believe, because I've stretched out some faces while I was modeling this very quickly. I have an uneven bevel or inset uh, edges around that windshield, so I might press Control Z, go back into object mode, object, apply, and scale. And so now if I go back, tab into edit mode and inset with the I key and move a mouse, I have an even border or edge around my windshield. So there we go. So that is both the Symmetrize tool as well as the Mirror Modifier in Blender. They both have their pros and cons, but they both let you model two halves of an object basically at the same time. That will be it for this video though. Thank you so much for watching again. My name is Colin and I ask that if you like this video or if you learned something in it, please go ahead and click on that like button below this video. It really helps out me and my channel and I really appreciate it. If you want to see more videos like this one in either Blender or in the Godot game engine, go ahead and click on subscribe and that bell icon so you don't miss any videos of mine in the future. Go ahead and check out my Facebook and Instagram pages. In those two places, I post sneak peeks and previews of what I'm working on next and it's where I communicate with all of you the most except here on YouTube through my channel but that'll be it for this one thanks again so much for watching i'll see you in the next one bye, -bye.